On Saturday, the Reverend Al Sharpton and his National Action Network held a We Shall Not Be Moved march and rally in Washington. An estimated 2,000 people turned out despite the rainy, icy weather. The message, roll back, uh, the message, rollbacks on hard-won civil rights and economic justice will not be tolerated. Come not to appeal to Donald Trump, because he's made it clear what his policies are and what his nominations are. We come to say to the Democrats in the Senate and in the House and into the moderate Republicans to get some backbone, get some guts. We didn't send you down here to be weak need. It's so very important that we look out for our young people because they can't defend themselves. And so I continue this fight because my son was shot down and it made me stand up. So won't you stand with us won't you go back to your community and stand up and make a difference in your community? This march is important because it is a witness of conscience. This is a testimony of both resistance and anger at the way things are. And so what we're trying to say today is that Donald Trump will not exhaust our ability to tell the truth about American democracy and we will not capitulate to him without a resistance and a conscience. We wanted to be part of this effort uh, with Reverend Al Sharpton and, and all of the civil and human rights organizations in the country to send a strong message that we're going to continue to work and fight for the principles that we believe in, economic opportunity, voting rights, uh, a sane criminal justice system, uh, educational equity, uh, that we're going to stand up if there's any effort to roll back the progress that we've made. Okay, Devon and Eugene, uh, you know, personally, <laughs> these marches to me are a little bit of a waste of time. I mean, I feel like we, we march, we march, we, we sort of walk down the street and we think that something's going to happen. We end up with no agenda, no real sort of um, specific ask when we have a meeting with a leader. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but I, I don't want to go after Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton obviously is not the problem. He is trying to make things better in, well, in the grand scheme, know, but what do you think? Let me say this. I'm going to go after Al Sharpton, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> but Al Sharpton this Saturday was an ego struggle for Al Sharpton. There was no solution presented. There was no meeting called. Uh -huh. I mean, you bring 2,000 2, people to D.C., you do it in a day when Congress is actually in session, and then you demand a meeting with the powers that be and actually try to find a solution. Yeah. You know, so, the, I mean, it, so there are two things here. The first is that even when, when we look back at what we call the civil rights movement, you have a bunch of things happening that may or may not be connected. Folks organized with a variety of different potential agendas. And so this is just one iteration of one community of folks right. um, that have a particular disposition towards how they engage in politics. And I think a part of the issue is, is that it discredits a lot of the real grassroots work that's happening in communities all over the country. Yeah. In Baltimore, Absolutely. In, in, over in Baltimore, we've been really clear about the of our agenda around issues of police reform, around criminal justice, um, you know, and have, and have marched on our state's capital, right, as well as City Hall. And so all those things are important. But I think the second thing that's also really important, if we're using King's legacy as a template for looking at how we move forward, right. you think about um, the, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, which was a, you know, a collection of, of churches in the South. And, and this was at a time when the black church is really the hub of organizing and activism. And a part of the problem yeah, but that Davon, we... Don't you think I think that part of the problem here is that Sharpton is effectively trying to copy that model from the 1950s and 60s when, when marching down the street actually worked. Because you marched down the street and that was like a big deal in the well, South. The <laughs> cops got upset, the authorities well, got upset. Now you march down the street and the, the, the police are sort of like, okay, we'll march with you, yeah. we'll give you the permit, we're part of your march. It's just that. not the what, what same would, type you, of thing. They're marching what? on a Saturday. Not, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's, right. that's, that's, that's a perspective. Right. That's, that's uh -huh. my perspective here. You know, we just had a discussion about how members of Congress only want to fly back in for the inaugural. Right. They're marching on a Saturday when when there are no members of Congress here. So whose attention are you are you seeking to get? Is this Al Sharpton seeking the attention of 2,000 folk, you know, you know, taking the issue that matters to them and, you know, pretty much pouring it down a dream without any action plan, without but, any real recourse of action? I think, or, I think but, but more importantly, I would I would argue that he's not actually not going back to the 1960s and using the template they used. That yeah. essentially when you have strong relationships to corporate media, right, to white-led <laughs> philanthropic institutions that are able to give you access to resources, right, well, that's different than being based on the ground. Well, the whole, that part, you're right. <laughs> the corporate part is new. 
but the whole idea that okay I'm marching down the street so that means something that that is the same thing that I mean I just think that to some extent Al Sharpton just wants to be seen he wants himself well, seen he wants to be marching seen, down the street. but I, I think it's but, important that we understand that the the template of organizing that we see like when we look at the Montgomery bus boycott we're talking about an organization made up primarily of black church women who have been organizing around issues for decades before the Montgomery bus boycott mm -hmm. and think about the capacity they had to have a 13th month long um, alternative transportation system right as a person who's worked in city government I know some government agencies that wouldn't be able to do that so we're talking about a template around organizing that was about building power from the grassroots and what we see from Sharpton is his connections and relationships to the corporate sector give him a platform that doesn't come from community he's not yeah. sectioned by folks on the grassroots and so it's important in keeping with King's legacy that we we take seriously the importance of grassroots organizing so that we do have marches yeah. that have an I mean, end goal I don't want to totally but just dump on Sharpton because well, he's not the only one that he's not, does he's not this. The only one, he's not the only one that you does know. this. But this is the difference between Dr. King and a lot of these current you know, folk that, you know, parade themselves to be civil rights leaders. Uh -huh. Dr. King can go demand a meeting with LBJ and get something yeah. accomplished. All right. Dr. King can go demand a meeting with members of Congress and get something and done. And he had a demand. Al Sharpton, specific Al demand. Sharpton could get meetings with a lot of these same folk that are holding power today. But you know what he does? He leads people down on a Saturday march instead of a weekday march and demand that the members of Congress come meet with their folk. And what's going to be interesting is next week we've got the women's march the day after the inauguration, mm -hmm. which is now building into a huge, huge, huge march. <laughs> where it started out as I wouldn't say a small thing, but yeah. it didn't it didn't sound like it was going to be as big as it as it's going to be. And I think that's probably an example of sort of new young leadership Jeff. kind of eclipsing. But Janae Ingram's doing an amazing job. Exactly. Organizing that. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Janae Ingram's you know doing an amazing job organizing exactly. that. Exactly. Kickstart your day at seven and get the news you need from the perspective you want. News One Now with Roland Martin every weekday morning at seven on TV One.